Hello and welcome to the Cinema ATL Podcast for October 2018. The Cinema ATL Podcast is a monthly podcast that examines the world of entertainment through the lens of local Atlanta filmmakers. And that would be us. Is it really monthly? <laughs> Semi-monthly. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm Michael D. Friedman, one of your hosts. Uh, Martin Kelly, your other host. And, and first things first, apologize for missing September. So, um, Yeah, we... We got a it is busy. a monthly podcast, but it, it, we did miss September. Yeah. We had stuff going on. Lots of stuff. Lots of... We were working on, working on stuff and uh, getting my car totaled and uh, a bunch yeah. of other things like I, that. So. <laughs> we didn't even win that day. Yeah. Yeah. Coming back from the Falcons day game, I get my, my car totaled. Ah, anyway. Terrible. Not my fault. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. So, anyway. We're here to talk about movies and entertainment That's and right. film in That's Atlanta, right. not about... Not about not about cars getting totaled cars getting or totaled the Falcons and, and, and Falcons sucking season. right now and, <laughs> and uh, you know being overwhelmed by work. But we're talking movies, which we like to do. And yes. uh, one of the things we like to do is talk about local movies. And so, yes. as a reminder, we always want you to send us your projects, local Atlanta filmmakers. Yeah. And we're going to talk about a couple today. Yeah. Uh, but we want you to also tweet and share yep. and send this podcast to your friends and let them criticize us and tell us how <laughs> how ugly we are or whatever it is whatever it is that they don't like about us so if you want to tell us how ugly we are you can tweet us at uh, cinema atl or myself at badger 33 or me at marte underscore real one all right and then yeah just uh if you want to comment on facebook or CinemaATL.com or YouTube or wherever you see this. Yeah, or SoundCloud or whatever. Whatever. We'd love to hear feedback and, yeah. And and we'd love to hear good feedback, but we're saying we're giving you permission <laughs> to give us bad feedback. Yeah. So, anyway, for those of you who haven't been with us before, this is how this podcast works. Um, first, we talk about some industry news, and then we'll jump into a top three, which is our opinion of Correct. the top three Subject matter. And this this month, it's top three biopics. And the reason it's top three biopics is because our big movie review is a biopic called First Man. Yes. And that's uh, that's our third segment. And then the fourth segment, we normally go into a technique topic, but I think we're going to have technique topics. Yeah, it's going to be a... Plural today. A smorgasbord or potpourri, potpourri or, or whatever, whatever. Veritable multiple. cornucopia. A cornucopia. As we topics. enter the fall season. That's so right. Oh, that's cornucopia beautiful. That's a beautiful analogy. Topic. And then finally, we uh, we wrap it up every month with the movie game, which um, we'll explain the rules of the movie game. Um, but uh, I'm doing about as good as the Falcons are doing this season. I don't think ever. you're doing that good. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, I'm sorry. I don't have injuries as an excuse either. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so thank you for uh, stopping by. So uh, why don't we just jump right into some industry news? Yeah, let's do it. So industry news. Yeah, yeah. so uh, how we do industry news is usually we talk about films that were shot in Georgia or Atlanta that are coming out to theaters right now. Yep. And then, then we talk about productions that are happening right now in Georgia. Yep. And so... Um, and then we yeah. talk about other things. Yeah, well, well. And, yeah, exactly. Not just productions, but that's that's the format. It's like films coming out, then productions, and then we talk about events. So there's a lot on the docket since we missed a month, so why don't we... Uh, <laughs> Start out first, uh, playing right now, um, Venom, which is the, the number the number one, one movie, movie for two weeks in a row. I know. Um, is was shot partially here, so a lot here, actually. a lot here, actually yeah, most yeah. of it here. Um, and then also Goosebumps Two, Dude. Haunted ha- Halloween uh, came out. Uh, yeah, that, that was, was shot here too. Exactly. And surprising, I saw I went and saw that, and because my my kid wanted to go see it, and uh, surprisingly. Um, some artwork that I did is actually in the film. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I was not. That answering. is awesome. We, need, uh, we should uh, talk about that in the. Yeah, well, the it was a, a Eureka Failure a poster that oh. I did actually made its way into the film of uh, Goosebumps 2. That's awesome. That's awesome. So I don't know who put it in there, but. Somebody over at our... the studio. I know some people over there at the studio. Yeah. Oh, so cool. I, was, I, was, I was like, I was shocked to see myself on the screen. That is that was awesome. pretty cool. Um, so, Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, yeah well, did they make you sign a form? No. Oh, well, I now, did it. Now you can hold them over a barrel. 
I don't want to get too deep into the technique topic. We talk about it. No, actually, um, since I did it as a work for hire, right, that they can they can use it however they want. As anyway, long as someone else signed. So it. yeah, so, yeah. so okay. I'm sure they did. I'm sure it was above the board. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, and then so um, we're talking about some local film indie films that are, that are coming out now. Um, first one I want to mention is um, one called Small Group. It's a was shot in Athens. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a it's a Christian film um, about uh, uh, the small group. Like a, like a youth group, ch- right? Well, it's not a youth group. It's oh. like a church group, a church small group. group. Um, you know, not being that, that familiar with the Christian. Well, not being in the church in myself, the church I don't really right. know the the whole thing about mm-hmm. the small group. But it's about that. Um, it was written and directed by Matt Chastain. Um, so that's coming out, I think, October 19th, which is this two days Friday. from now, this Friday. Yeah, if, you're, if um, you're listening early. Yeah, in some of these local Atlanta theaters. So mm-hmm. if you want to find out where it's playing, we suggest go to smallgroupmovie.com and find out more about the film. Um, and actually, I watched the trailer. It looks pretty pretty entertaining. It looks uh, funny. and uh, Awesome. You know, it's not one of those... Uh, you know, beat you over the head with the religious th- type thing, but it's right, a, you know, right. it seems to be a really fun movie. Um, and then I'll, I'll definitely be watching with interest. Another indie film, um, which you might have heard of, Martin, is coming out. Uh, yeah, this one called the uh, Beauty and the Beholder. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's correct. Beauty and the Beholder, uh, which is a film I produced and co-wrote, is coming out on October twenty sixth, so a week from Friday. Uh, well, this. Friday, if you, on you. <laughs> uh, in Atlanta, it's playing at Aurora Theaters, um, so it'll be playing there for a week ahead of its release on Amazon Prime, which nice. is November second. All right, great. So we'll, so, we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll talk about later. more about that and the technique topic. But why don't you just give a brief synopsis of the? Film okay, well, uh, be Beauty and the Beholder is about a plastic surgeon who has a warped sense of beauty until he meets a natural beauty who changes his perception. And it's a dark romantic comedy with a twist. So um, it's got, you know, it's it's fun like a romantic comedy, but it's the material is a little bit darker. And, and it is rated R. So uh, that's one... Rated R. Yeah, that's one thing I will say that, you Not know, I want... I'll, it's definitely rated R, so be, be sure <laughs> you know that going in. So, but we'd love for you to go see it. Yeah, so check that out. And then, so that's what's coming out right or playing now um so there's a bunch of stuff filming right now so martin yeah. you, you you told me about a couple of these so why don't you uh, start that yes yeah. well first off probably the biggest on the list uh maybe yeah probably probably the biggest on the list is called bad boys for life and it's a you know it's a uh, will smith and martin lawrence are gonna try their hand at a buddy cop action <laughs> movie and so we'll see really? if that works we'll see if that works i haven't I done that before i don't believe michael bay's back <laughs> for this version but they are filming in atlanta which is pretty cool not in miami not in miami and then uh so you know i, I a lot of people are big fans of bad boys i remember liking the original a lot and think, thinking the sequel was a little okay you know not, yeah. not the greatest no the original's Original is kind of a classic nowadays, right? Sure, sure. Yeah. You know, the second one, you know, it, it, it's sequelitis, basically. Yeah. But, you know, maybe they'll redo it. They'll retool it, and, and, and it'll come off. I mean, obviously, I uh, still admire Will Smith and, and Martin Lawrence, and they're very talented. So hopefully they'll bring some new life to this uh, series and, and, and put it back on the map. And, mm. you know, another big movie for Atlanta. Kevin Hart's not in that. No, I think... <laughs> He seems make... to be like in every Atlanta. Well, yeah, he's in a, a lot of Atlanta films, and you know, one one that that came out while we were Night away School. was Night School, which which I did see. And uh, um, but moving on, I know you're interested in this one, and I'm interested too because we both really like uh, Rose Byrne, and it's called Limited Partnership. And uh, I assume it's a comedy because a Rose Byrne um, and, and Tiffany. b Tiffany oh. Haddish. <laughs> Uh, are known for comedy. Of course, Rose Byrne, you know, is very versatile. She does drama as well, and also Salma Hayek. And um, so I don't know. I think it's a, a comedy because also M- Miguel Arteta is the director, yeah. and he he specializes in dark comedies. Actually, yeah, dark comedies, yeah, so. like uh, Chuck and Buck, and, yeah. and The Good Girl. Yeah, which those are both, both were pretty Sundance. dark. Yeah, yeah, Sundance movies. So it would be interesting to see, you know. Yeah, you know, I've most of Tiffany Haddish's stuff so far has been pretty straightforward. It's very broad, broad yeah. yeah. It's interesting to see if they do they do go that route. Mm-hmm. Uh, another film filming now, um, Doctor Sleep, which is a Stephen King adaptation. Is that going to work? I don't know. I mean, is 
have Stephen King adaptations worked? Some of them have. No, of course they have. I'm being <laughs> facetious. Like, especially now. Well, some of them have failed miserably. But, no, I yeah. mean, now it's funny because some of them have failed miser- miserably and then they've redone them and they've succeeded wildly. Right? Yeah, well, it being Correct. one. And then now, you know, obviously Pet Cemetery yeah. is, is being redone and now Dr. Sleep. I don't know if it was ever done before. I've, n- I've not heard of this property before, but... Uh... But yeah. it's um it's got Ewan McGregor and Rebecca Ferguson. I will be looking forward to that then. So, and uh, I'm just waiting for them to do the Lawnmower Man uh, remake. <laughs> yeah, let's um, reboot that. Reboot that. that would be great. And then finally on the movie front, uh, the banker. Yeah, the banker stars Samuel L. Jackson back to Atlanta. You know, he went to Morehouse actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Anthony Mackie also. And this is based on a true story. Um, kind of interesting concept. Uh, two African Americans uh, hire. A uh, white man to front their company, uh, their real estate empire, and they sort of pose as a, a chauffeur and a janitor, respectively, <laughs> while they, uh, you know, pull the strings behind the scenes. So, uh, you know, interesting concept. Yeah, sounds. Uh, you know, Samuel L. Jackson's always uh, good. He's he's good for a uh, entertaining. He's good entertaining. He's not he's, always he good. He can be awesome, and he can be also, he can be like himself you know sometimes <laughs> well he can, he's always himself well, I mean, no much. but i'm just saying he can also sometimes just be <clears throat> just be sort of a version of himself and mm-hmm. not really a character but i i mean i love sam jackson so it's great to have him back in town and then on the tv show front um there's a ton of tv shows that are back in production yeah. and a bunch of the fall shows have to start you know coming out with the new fall seasons but in addition to that um brock meyer shooting another season mm-hmm. here um, there's a show called Legacies, which is actually another spinoff from the Vampire Diaries. Oh, okay. It's a spinoff of the sp- originals. Nice. The, so it's a spinoff of a spinoff. Um, there's The Passage, which I think I mentioned before. I think you did, um, yeah. Which stars Mark Paul Gossler. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll be a Fox Mid-Season replacement. It's like a vampire virus thing. Interesting. Nice. Stranger Things, of course, is all course. over the place. Yeah, um, can't wait for that to come back. Doom Patrol, um, which is a DC and universe. We mentioned, that we mentioned it before. Briefly, yes. Huh? I actually know some people that are working on it. Cool. That they found out afterwards. That's very cool. Um, so that's going to be on the DC Universe streaming platform. And then a uh, n- new show called Sex, T- Sex Tuplets uh, with Marlon Wayans. It's going to be a Netflix uh, show where he. Wait a minute. Netflix is shooting something here? <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Well, they're shooting Stranger possible? Things, too. I know. I'm and saying. Ozark. But yet another show? Yet another right new show. Wow. And I think that might lead into some technique topic I think discussion. I'm going to bring it up. I think I'm going to bring it up. Some past history from this podcast. Um, but yeah, so those are the TV shows that are filming out. There's other, some other TV shows out there, too. There's some pilots that are shooting. Um, you know, just if you want to know what's going on in the... Uh, the local industry, just check out um, the Georgia Help Wanted hotline Correct. at georgia.org, and, and you'll learn a lot. Yeah, and for example, when we say that, we're not kidding, because two of the things we mentioned, they have, they're have they looking for to fill positions. So if you want to work on two of these that we mentioned... We won't name which two. We're not going to name which two. got to go to the Georgia, <laughs> Georgia website, to the hotline, and uh, find out. Find it out. Okay, so that does that's stuff that's shooting... And shot um, quickly. Some other news, some stuff that's going on. There's a there's a thing called the Return of the Fifty Foot Film Fest, which is playing at the Plaza Theater on October 30th. It's a sci-fi, horror, fantasy, bunch of short films by Atlanta area filmmakers. I think the people behind Horror Hotel are oh, running this. Okay, uh, got it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a one night thing. Um, you have to get tickets online. They're not going to sell it at the theater. So um, the most I could find out about it was on Facebook. Go to they got a web page, their Facebook page, um, and it's the return of the Fifty Foot Film Fest. And then another film festival that's going on is the Atlanta Horror Film Festival, and that's running from October twenty fifth to the twenty seventh at the Synchronicity Theater. So before or after you see Beauty and the Beholder, go there check out the Atlanta Horror Festival. Yeah, and that's it. Uh, you can go to Atlanta Horror Film fest.com to learn more about that and they're affiliated with the atlanta underground film festival right. and some of the other mm-hmm. ones that are, that are going on there and then and, there's a special uh episode halloween episode coming up of a, yes. of a, of a series that a classic series yes the classic series lumber baron of jasper county has its annual halloween episode coming out sometime before halloween well, Just that look, look, look for it. Um, go to Lumber Baron web series on Facebook or lumberbaronthe 
find out more. Um, I'm actually in this episode. Uh, Pete, I'm not. Pete makes a triumphal I'm return. I'm not. So that's so. that's 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 disturbing. All right. Well, <laughs> you can't always get what you want, Martin. True. All right. Well, that's it for all that's the news. It, yes. Let's let's jump into the top three. Yep. All right. Top three. Top three biopics this month. Yeah. So t- today we're. We're going to be talking about biopics because our big movie review is a biopic. And yep. so we're going to be talking about our top three, which again is our favorites. Our favorites. Of right now. Of right now. Of yeah. right now. So could change tomorrow. Yes. Could change while we're reading this list off. I might change mine. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we're feeling right now. So it's not objectively like the best. It's subjectively. Totally subjectively. Now these are giving us the feels today. Yes. So so we'll start out at the bottom. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna name some honorable mentions. Okay. Uh, for me, was uh, some, some of my honorable mentions are Raging Bull, Malcolm X, and then Wolf of Wall Street. Nice. Um, I had a tough time trying to get those get in the list, but I, at the end they didn't make it mainly because Raging Bull and Malcolm X I haven't seen in a while. Right. Um, so they're not as fresh in my memory, and and Wolf of Wall Street is just because I I couldn't actually tell you the name of the person that it's being bio picked. Well, I could, but that's, that's kind of funny. Well, you're special. But <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying it didn't stick in my mind that much, you know. So if, it didn't, if the name didn't stick in my mind. That's maybe, a great uh, list. And I love Wolf of Wall Street. Actually, Wolf of Wall Street was kind of an influence on uh, Beauty and the Beholder. Oh, yeah. So cool. anyway, hope you see that. I will. On October 26th. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my honorable mentions. Uh, uh, these, these were, I, had, I, had, I thought about the ones you had on mm-hmm. your list. As honorable mentions, and ultimately, didn't didn't put them in the mix just Not because again. I, I know I, I I really thought about it, but then, I, you know, I, I I got fixated on my number three. So, uh, but my honorable mentions are Aaron Brockovich and Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. Rudy. <laughs> and I can't believe that's not one of yours. Well. You haven't heard my top three yet, but it's <laughs> actually not on my top three. That's crazy. That's one of my favorite movies, and I just I didn't really think of it as a biopic for some reason. It didn't, didn't pop in my head, but yeah, it's perfect biopic, and it's it's actually more as I biopic said, than I might some wanna, of the ones on my list. I might want to change my list, but uh, for right now, I'm going to leave it off the list. Right, it's a great okay. movie. I love it. Um, I'm leaving it off the list for now. Okay. So anyway, my number three um, is I Tanya. Oh, okay. Which is a film that came out just last year. I'm shot here in Atlanta. Yeah, shot in Atlanta. And, uh, yeah, the more I watch it, the more I enjoy it. Oh, that's cool. My number three is a tie, and uh, it's basically... Tie? Yes, it's a tie, but it's... Come it's, on, it's The purpose of it is to sort of just <laughs> just pay my respects to one of my former favorite filmmakers. Former favorite filmmaker? Well, I mean, he's not right now, is all <laughs> okay. I'm saying. Like, but he used to be, like, right up there. And uh, that's Oliver Stone, and the movies that, that are tying... Are JFK and Born on the Fourth of July, and right. so uh, you could even throw Nixon in because Nixon's a fantastic film too. But he was the king of the biopics yeah. for a while. Yeah, those are some those are some very impressive films. This um, number two for me um, is The Social Network, oh, nice. um, which is for those of you who don't know, it's the story of Mark Zuckerberg's founding of Facebook. Nice, yeah. Um, very interesting tale. We'll talk about it. Okay, and my number two is The Insider. Oh, yeah. So, I, haven't heard the, I haven't seen that one in a while, but yeah. So. And that one plays on cable quite yeah. a bit, and so I, I, I've, I've got to see that recently, and so I appreciate it even more. All right, well, speaking of a movie that plays on cable a lot, uh, my number one is Catch Me If You Can. Oh, nice. Which, yeah, which is one of my favorite Spielberg films. One of my favorite films. Uh, anyway, so, um, yeah. Cool. So, Cool. So my number one is a little bit older uh, than our our list here. Well, yeah, yeah, a bit older. It's The Last Emperor uh, by Bernardo Bertolucci. So we'll talk more about it. Nice. Okay. Well, yeah. So let's talk. Let's talk about these. I'm going to skip my honorable mentions because I already talked about why, sure. why there are my honorable mm-hmm. mentions. Number, uh, number three for me, I, Tanya. Um, it's just one of those movies that, that I just gained a better appreciation of. The, I've seen it a couple times more since I saw it last year. Mm-hmm. I, I liked it last year, but I didn't think it was like really great. Right. But the more I watched it, the more I enjoy it. And I just like the way it's shot. I like the way 
the director made the choice to have the characters address the camera directly during certain scenes and just break the fourth wall. Mm -hmm. Um, And it really spins something that you think you might have known Mm -hmm. on its head. And it's not really the story that you think that you just assume you knew. Um, which is what I really appreciate it. And the, the performances are really great in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a really cool movie. Really cool movie. So my number three, of course, is more about the director. Number and threes. Threes, threes, yeah. My two number threes. <laughs> uh, and, you know, JFK is like, it's considered a biopic, even though it's kind of like, yeah, it's about an investigation more so than a, than a biopic. But, it, you know, it's a little bit of a biopic on... Uh, on um, uh, Garrison, who led the investigation mm. and, and brought the case, uh, but then Born on the Fourth of July is a, certainly a biopic, and it's yeah. it's uh, again it's more about how Oliver Stone used to be one of the best filmmakers going, and in those films, uh, special JFK, but he would use every tool in a filmmaker's toolkit to tell the story, and really effectively. I mean. Some of the some of the you know the sequences in JFK are just mind blowing how mm-hmm. good they are. So that's that's why I love those films and him as a filmmaker of biopics. Seems like he needs to do something now. He like, hasn't. What's he done recently? He's done like like a documentary series on Cuba, basically. Uh, okay. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen much. Well, he, I mean, he wasn't necessarily on Cuba. He that was the other thing he did. He did like a. Interviews with Fidel Castro before he died, hmm. you know, and then well, a documentary a movie, series about, a movie about, about you know, America, like basically the opposite of what we think of. <laughs> <laughs> um, so think, speaking of uh, directors, one of the reasons my, my number two is the social network. And one of the main reasons is David Fincher directed it and. Uh, I just love him as a director, and it's kind of funny because you th- it's really like lighter it's it's not light material, but it's lighter material than he would normally delve into when right. you think about like seven or, or zodiac or or those other like darker Fincher oh, yeah. movies mm-hmm. um, um, but it still has that same style and it really is just like I love the way it's shot and then specifically, I love Jesse Eisenberg's performance as Zuckerberg in it um and it's just he's just it's probably the most powerful role he's ever done of course he got nominated for it so sure sure and then I, so, I think Andrew yeah. Garfield does a fantastic job Andrew Garfield's well. great in it too and then uh Arm, Army Hammer who was yeah. probably is like I think it wasn't necessarily his debut but it was like his biggest yeah, role at the time as, as the yeah we 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 Voss twins yep and a great um, script by Aaron Sorkin yeah uh, it's just a, it's a really good film if you haven't seen it it might you know, so people might be avoiding it because Facebook's getting some bad press recently, and yeah. so maybe they don't want to, they don't really care about Mark Zuckerberg. But, but it's just funny because it's like, um, it's not funny. It's sad. It's like sad and funny. It's like, uh, well, the movie itself is, does the same thing. It's a, it's a mixture of sad and funny because he's sure. a, he's a very interesting character. But um, the fact that he couldn't relate to people, but yet he founded the biggest social media site there is out there. Well, I think that's kind of a I think what's that's funny really is is that at the time nobody thought about it but now more people are thinking that's basically social media in general. Yeah. Is that everyone supposedly is connected yeah. and yet but how maybe we're not. We? Yeah. So but my number two, The Insider, directed by Michael Mann, uh, who is known more for his crime, you know, his crime mm-hmm. work. You know, he does fantastic uh, work with crime thrillers. Uh, but the insider is a biopic, you know, kind of depicting the, the time frame of about six months of a whistleblower story, and the the CBS sixty Minutes producer who's trying to bring it to air and really has to struggle against mm. the powers that be uh, and the big tobacco industry to uh, to get that story told. And it's got a wonderful performance by uh, Al Pacino as the producer, and then. A really fine performance by Russell Crowe in sort of the early days of Russell Crowe before he blew up and became, mm. you know, capital A Russell Crowe. You know, he was, or maybe capital R, but but you know, what I mean, he he might say he was a, on his way up, and this this really solidified him as a serious talent and actor. Yeah, it was a real stretch for him at this point. Yeah, he'd yeah. mainly been like the leading, been tough, guys. tough guy, yeah, leading yeah. man type. Yeah, and this was sort of a you know he was a uh, like a. A reluctant hero yeah. in this and, and fantastic film um you know really well done and again another case of where michael mann a lot like you you know you talk about fincher you know digging into his bag of tricks uh to create a wonderful you know visual uh film as well 
And then for me, number one, Catch Me If You Can. Um, it's just one of my favorite movies. It's Spielberg. I think it's one of Spielberg's best movies personally. Um, even though it's not a big in scope sure, movie, sure. it's it's a little bit smaller movie for him. Um, but it's still so well done that the, the cinematography in it alone um, is really worth watching. And if you haven't, if you're interested in cinematography, I think you should watch this film to see how the he, the and I, I forget who, who the DP was, but um, the way he uses light to set the mood and tone of scenes is just so well done. It's so. Was he still working like with master- Kaminsky, Janish Kaminsky yes. at the time? Yes, so I, I think believe it, it's. Kaminsky, yeah, I think it was yes. still Kaminsky. Um, so it's just really well shot, but I mean, you don't even think about it. Sure. That's, that's how good it is. It's sure. like so well done. You don't think about it, but when you start watching it intently. You pick up on some of the things that he does with it, um, and then just Christopher Walken performance <laughs> in it is great. Yeah, um, just for this one scene alone where he's talking about the the, the mice, the two mice fall into a, <laughs> a bucket of cream, and yeah, they turn it into butter. <laughs> that <laughs> so is an awesome one story. Of scenes, so. It's a very cool story. But my number one is uh, the Last Emperor, and again, this is a biopic about the uh, last emperor of China. So it's it's a true story about uh, the journey from a child emperor into uh, uh, just a, a, a regular citizen. Because uh, during the time of his his life, he started as an emperor, but then in China, the Communist Revolution happened. Mm-hmm. And it tells the story of sort of the raucous uh, upheaval that that country went through, through the lens of this character who started out as like the supreme you know ruler mm-hmm. of the country. So, uh, fantastic film, super... You know, fantastic scope, very epic. I mean, in the classic sense of the word, we talked about that last year about not having enough of those kind yeah. of movies, and this is certainly a throwback to those yeah. kind of movies. Epic story. I haven't seen it, but I, I do want to check it out. I mean, it's been on my like to watch list forever. But cool, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, and, and you guys, if you haven't seen it, because it's, it's been a while. I mean, that movie's been out for a long time, yeah. and so I would recommend it. All right, so to wrap up, uh, my top three biopics were number three, I, Tanya, number two, Social Network, and number one, Catch Me If You Can. Okay, and my top three, uh, number three, JFK slash Born on the Fourth of July, number two, The Insider, and number one, The Last Emperor. Well, great, yeah. Um, recommend it. If you haven't seen these films, go ahead and check them out. There's Absolutely. a lot of great films on this list. and uh, list. Uh, so why don't we just jump into the, the big movie review? Yep, big uh, movie review. Our latest biopic. So uh, today's big movie review is First Man by uh, Damien Chazelle, mm-hmm. director and starring Ryan Gosling. And it's the biopic of Neil Armstrong. Yes, I was about to say Lance Armstrong, but I meant oh. <laughs> that would have been bad. I don't know why I just admitted that I was about to say Lance Armstrong. <laughs> yeah, yes, Neil Armstrong. I, I is covered the... it. I covered it. You should know. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, it basically tells the tale of, you know, first man on the moon. Um, and basically from his time um, as, as a, a test, test pilot, pilot. Um, up through the, the Gemini program, the mm-hmm. Gemini, as they say. They, the, yeah, they oh, were saying Gemini, and yeah, I, I've always thought Gem- it was Gemini. Yeah, I was wondering, did, did everybody just pronounce things wrong back then? or is that, Well, maybe we're doing sense? it now. <laughs> were, yeah. So through the Gemini program, up through um, the Apollo mission, so all the way for, to him landing on the moon. Right. Um, so as Martin said, yeah, directed by Damien Chazelle. Uh, written by Josh Singer, who wrote Spotlight and mm-hmm. The Post. So a it's based writer. on a book. Based, based on off a book. Uh, yeah, called First Man. Called First Man. Mm-hmm. Um, the same DP worked with Damien Chazelle, Linus Sandgren, and then uh, composer Justin Hurwitz again yeah. from La La Land and Whiplash. They all worked together um, a lot. Um, They've got so, a really good supporting cast too. Yeah, uh, good Claire supporting. Foy, who I really hadn't. I didn't know she's from The Queen. I guess The Queen, does, does yeah, really, on Netflix, really, really well. Now she's getting a lot of roles. Mm-hmm. Jason Clark, Jason um, Clark, uh, even um, you know, even like Carl Chandler and uh, yeah, and and uh, Patrick Fugit. Yeah, I was. Surp- I didn't recognize Patrick. I know Fugit. he was I almost didn't recognize. I was like, holy crap, that's Patrick Fugit. And Ethan he, Embry's in it too, which I didn't recognize him. And either. even Christopher Abbott, who's like yeah. underrated. He used to be on Girls. I don't know if you remember him from that show, but and then Corey Stahl, Stoll, Stoll. who played. Uh, uh, Buzz Aldrin in the right. film as well. Mm-hmm. He 
might know him as uh, the bad guy from Ant Man. So true, true. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, so not, I mean that's pretty much the basics of the story. Um, I guess we can get right into it. It's actually filmed in Atlanta, mm-hmm. um, so it was one of the reasons for us to review uh, the, this month. Um, I thought it was a a good movie, but not a great movie. I don't know. How about you? Yeah, I agree. I agree with you, and I think um, I think part of it was the subject it's himself. I think you know Neil Armstrong was a talk about reluctant hero. Yeah, uh, he certainly was in his life, and then that maybe becomes a challenge to make a dramatic story out of someone who's not, you know. As active as we're used to seeing in cinema, so, right? So I wanted to say, like, it, it kind of fails as a biopic almost because of that. <laughs> like, you don't really know much about him, right? Like, you don't learn a lot about him. Um, for those that don't know, the 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 backstory of, of Armstrong was that he had a, a young daughter who died from cancer mm-hmm. when she was two, and that really impacted his life a, a, a lot. Um, and it kind of kept him closed off from a lot of people, right? Um, which, in effect, closes makes, him off, closes from, the off audience, from the basically. audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that was my biggest problem with the film itself. It's not a bad film, but I also don't feel like I really learned anything about any of the characters. Honestly, I I agree as, with but, you. as good as the acting and, no, and no, the performances and, and were. Everything about the film is good, and I really like I, I really like what the attempt was, and you know he's mentioned it. You know, Damien Chazelle is trying to show you how how difficult it was to sort of, you know, do this thing. Yeah. Right. And and I think he does you a do good get, job of you that. Get, do you get more of appreciation mm-hmm. of what they went through in the space program than you do as a bio biography of Neil right. Armstrong? And I think more of that would have improved the film if if maybe they would have not focused so much on the character who doesn't want to be known. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't exactly. want it. He doesn't want it show any anything to anybody and, and so and they play with that that and that's kind of one of the themes of the movie so you don't want to fault them for doing that right. so you know that it's intentional um but it still it it hinders the movie because right, you don't get a good feeling for the character i think one of the best parts of the movie is at one point uh jason clark's character tries to talk to him mm-hmm. and like he doesn't it's like the one chance he has to open up and he doesn't and he talk doesn't, about it right and it's almost like you're like almost like mad at the filmmakers for not having had exactly. that conversation, but it's probably actually what happened. It's, yeah, right? exactly. So it's like it's totally you can't really fault. I you mean, can't fault them. At the same time, though, it doesn't make for as as enjoyable a, a yeah, film experience. Exactly. Um, but what I will say that was done great was the scenes in the rockets in the test flights themselves. You really felt like you were there. Mm-hmm. It really felt like you're like. Wow, I, I can't I, I don't I can't imagine people going through this on like I mean just seeing it totally I, on film it was I, like I totally a agree with you situation. and I used to when I was a kid I used to want to be an astronaut yeah. that really was what I wanted to do if you watch this film but I'm like, like <laughs> I'm glad I didn't pursue that yeah. because you know and of course it, you know things have changed and technology has has, has but I don't know yeah. if I could have made it well, that's the other thing is that it reveals is how amazing it was that this feat happened i mean this is something that's been covered in other movies so that that it's not that big of a breakthrough but it's just it it does reinforce the matter of like how we made it to the moon with the technology that we had at the time (laughs) at the time even say like in the film they're talking about he even mentions like um well we've only been flying for 60 years and we're trying to go to the moon like yeah, that's hard to fathom. That it was only sixty years earlier; they weren't even planes. No, exactly. It totally. I mean, like, that's what that's the appreciation I got out of the film is the fact that it made you think about wow, how incredible yeah. that time was. Those those people were determined yeah. to get something done, and and they didn't even have all the tools that we have today yeah. to get that thing done. And it was amazing that they did. Yeah. No, it was a uh, really uh, that that part of the film was really well done. And I also wanted to point out, I, I did bring up the composer, Justin Hurwitz's name. Um, you know, he did win Oscar for La La Land. I thought the music was really good in this film too. Like yeah. it was very. understated, but very intense and like no, absolutely. very, very, very well done. And yeah, I, I just wanted to point out that that, that was another favorite part of the film to me. Um, the performances were great. I mean, Ryan Gosling was, was good in the role. It's mm-hmm. just the fact that the role 
didn't give you a lot to, yeah, chew, to chew on, really. Exactly. It I wasn't think, like a showy role. It wasn't yeah, like, exactly. I think that was what he... I mean, I think that was a challenge he wanted to take on, and he, he took it on and did a fine job. But then, again, it boils down to, is it a good experience as an audience member? And it's, yeah. it's, it is a good experience, but it's not a, yeah, it's not great, a great experience. Movie. And, you know, this kind of movie, you feel like you're looking for greatness, and it didn't quite hit that. Yeah, and I, I guess it's like it's more about the film was a good film. It's just the subject matter wasn't right, the, right. the best Not choice. It wasn't right. the you know like I mean yeah I mean it just wasn't fa- it wasn't as fascinating as I was hoping it would be. And they, they and I think they they might have gone a little bit too much to the and I was reading about how accurate they were trying to right. be and portray. Mm-hmm. And maybe this might be one of the situations where you might want to take a little bit of creative license. Yes, get a little bit more. Um, like even like the relationship with Claire Foy's character, uh, his wife, um, that wasn't there wasn't a real sense of conflict there. Um, oh, yeah, a couple very times, few times, yeah, very few times. But there wasn't like the, based off of like what you might have seen in the commercial or something. You might you might, you think, might it's think it's more, more about yeah. like her dealing with it. But they like there's long stretches of time where she's not even on the. No, screen, totally. Yeah. yeah, the trailer makes it look like she's a huge part yeah. of the film, and she's a you know she's as big a part as she can be, yeah. not being Neil Armstrong. But but you're right; it's not as much as you expect. But I mean, like you know, I would say, like you know, this film fails the Bechdel test, right? Because like she's basically it's all about her being right, the wife, right, right, and being that role of the wife. Um, which, if there's not that direct tension, then right. how do you? How do you like gain more? Well, she she doesn't get to influence much of the story. And again, like like you said, creative license. You know, as screenwriters, we've we've always said this. Like, there's been people who bring in bring in uh, scripts based on um, you know based on true events, Mm -hmm. and and they say, well, that's what happened. Well, it doesn't make a good script. Yeah, it doesn't make it necessarily a story you want to know. Like, so you've got to. I could tell you what happened to me today. You know, I went and ate lunch, and you know, sat and. So but we can like, rewrite that and make it exciting. <laughs> make it exciting. <laughs> so, take yeah. some creative license. Take some creative license. Based on true events. <laughs> <laughs> based on a true story. That's why most stories are based on the true story, right. not the true is, story. Because otherwise you're watching the documentary. You should you be. Well be watching. Right, exactly. Yeah. And in which case, I'd be watching the documentary about the space program, not about... You know, which have myself. been fantastic. Yeah. You know, many of the, the documentaries... Uh, on the space program are really fantastic. So, so what I guess what I would say is that I give kudos to Damien Chazelle for the accomplishment, but he, to me, like he, he challenged himself like mm-hmm. way too much, yeah. and so he didn't quite hit the mark. So, overall, I would give the movie a B. Yeah, I think um, I'd give it a B too. Yeah. I, I, you know, I certainly think it's a worthy movie. It's certainly one uh, if you're an avid film goer, go see it. Uh, you know, you may like it more than we did. Yeah. Uh, and it is an accomplishment and it's well done. Yeah. And nothing, so, you know, again, nothing nothing detrimental about this film. It's just yeah. not that satisfying. Yeah. I just think it just overall is a story. It's like a, a little bit of uh, emptiness. Right. Which may be what they were they're going, going for. for. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> which is kind of what Neil Armstrong was feeling, right? He was, Could he be, was yeah. a great big hero, but it was still had the emptiness and stuff. Right. So in that regards, it's a success. But in, in overall regards of just as a movie itself, I, yeah, I'm gonna, I, I would say B. And um, personally, I don't think it's gonna. It, you know, p- p- people were talking before it came out about like Oscar buzz and stuff like that. I just don't see it um, happening. Well, without for, yeah, without knowing, it's really hard to tell yeah, at this stage yeah. because there's so many films so, about to come out. So we'll see. All right. Well, um, that was the. Review big, of big movie review. So uh, next yeah. we'll do some technique topics, Techn- which topics you know, several, several different so, ones. Uh, get ready. I'm <laughs> trying to crack my knuckles, but it's not not working. Okay. <laughs> so the technique topic. Uh, ordinarily, we relate it to the big movie review, but this time. Yeah. It's a biopic, and it's a little bit hard to figure out what to do as a technique I topic. I haven't written a biopic, so... And neither have I, so... There you go. So we'll just talk about a couple <laughs> topics and make it really brief this time. Let's just make it brief. All right. For the video. Topic video. topic number one. <laughs> so... What's your number one topic? What do you want to talk about? What's good you for your chest? Should I, should I do... 
the Netflix thing or yeah, just the, all yeah, right. Good Very quickly, stuff. we we talked about Netflix and uh-huh. Tessa Rando saying uh, they were going to bring all original production back to LA because it would improve the quality of their product because the the people making it wouldn't have to leave home. Mm-hmm. That presumes that the only people who can who are qualified to make content are living in Los Angeles. Well, guess what happened? <laughs> they bought a gigantic studio in New Mexico, which, from what I understand, is a little bit far from L.A. A little bit. Yeah, if I know my geography correctly, it's, it's quite a ways away. <laughs> and you know it better than most Americans. So, <laughs> and, and you know, and, and that's just to say that most Americans don't know ge- geography very well. You but. have to drive through at least one state <laughs> exactly. to get to that state. So and those are big states. So those people are not driving home at night to the comfort of their own home like you intended. So I think that it's about the same as being in Atlanta. Yeah, you might as well be in Atlanta at that point. So I think I'm proven right on that tick. But anyway, I'll let that one go. All right. You're letting it go? I'm letting it go now. Uh, not ready to rumble? No. All right. Topic number two. Uh, we want to talk about a little bit more about your film, Beauty and the Beholder. Yeah, so... Coming out October 26th. Yes, coming out October 26th in theaters, uh, and then November 2nd on Amazon, and then rolling out to all the other formats right after that, so be on the lookout for it. At the Aurora Cineplex. Aurora Cineplex in Roswell, off Roswell Road. Roswell. Check that out. Um, Yeah, tell us a little bit more about the film, though, because we we got brief glances, but uh, I want to know a little bit more. Uh, I mentioned it was a story about a, a... a warped sort of yeah. uh, plastic surgeon who has this crazy idea of what beauty is until he meets and becomes involved with a natural beauty who believes in natural beauty and she changes his perspe- perspe- perspective. And so uh, it's kind of a dark romantic comedy with a twist that I don't think people are going to get. Uh, directed by Laurent I'm not Austin. Expect it. They'll get the twist. Well, I hope they get the twist. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I hope they get the twist. <laughs> But I don't think they're going to guess it ahead, of, guess ahead it. of time. Yeah. But now uh, you have them thinking. So. And I know. But I, I challenge you to think. Challenge. Yeah. So anyway, um, Laurent Austin, um, the director, he wrote the original draft of the script, and then he brought it to the rest of us at Rail One Entertainment, which includes myself, Eddie Singleton, and Benny Swint. Uh, we rewrote the script till we were happy with it, then went into production. Uh, it's got a, some of the people that have been on this show uh, are involved with oh, the yeah? film. Uh, our co-host and good friend Candace Mabry uh, she's one of the stars of the film she does a fantastic job in it uh, also one of our co-hosts when we did the cinematography uh, technique topic uh, Michael Estes mm-hmm. uh, he did mm-hmm. additional cinematography on this film with us cool. um, lead actor uh, talented young man on um, Tyler Perry's show uh, If Loving You Is Wrong he's a recurring uh, role in that. His one name is Ruan Martin. Many Tyler Perry shows. But that, yes, he's on that one. He's, he's not on many. He's, he's not on, on all of them. Yeah, he's on, on that one. one. Uh, also, Louisa Torres, who's an actress who recently moved to Atlanta from Kentucky. She does a fine job in the film. And also, Arabella Ruby, who plays sort of a uh, reality star in the mm-hmm. film. And she does a, a wonderful job in uh, Greg Corbett, who was, was with us in Black Hats. And we have some cameos from. Uh, Bambi from Love and Hip Hop. Uh, I did. I did Bambi uh, Benson uh, from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Uh, she makes a, a, a cameo, and also Lacey Wild, who's uh, big in the plastic surgery world. I mean, there's a whole sort of subculture of plastic surgery, and and she's a big advocate for it, and she's she's sort of famous for that. Okay. So she makes a cameo as well. I am unfamiliar with the plastic surgery we've, subculture. We've you know we've dived into it. The, a little bit. Well, it's uh, interesting uh, to, to check that out. Uh, like, I wouldn't know anything about the. I didn't even know there was a plastic surgery subculture. Yeah, well, well, I mean, I know there's like, people that get plastic oh, surgery. Oh, and, yeah, and another, another uh, you know, uh, person who's 
who's associated with uh, sort of uh, plastic surgery shows, uh, Trinetta Love, who's also a singer, uh, she makes a cameo as well in, in the film. And uh, the story is, you know, it's it's kind of an examination of like our perception of of beauty, and it also touches on like social media. We talked a little bit about like the you know social network mm-hmm. uh, and what does that really mean for connection, right? And so that we touch on that a little bit in in the film. So you know, it's kind of topical, I think. All right, well, check it out. Uh... October 26th, try to go with the opening weekend. Opening weekend, yes. Because if more people show up, the more likely it'll stick around yes. for another week or two. Definitely. The theater, I mean, the theater's going to be packed. Like, the, one, of the, one of the really hard things about getting a movie into theaters as an independent is you have to compete with all the studio releases. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot coming out. We do have this window, and the theater will bet on us if we do well. So they'll, like, carry us over if we do really well. Great. Well, hopefully you people show up. You people. <laughs> you people. You people. <laughs> um, and then, yeah. So, yeah. So, what? That's it for technique topics, yeah. I guess, right? I mean, I don't... Yeah, I, yeah. I just want to talk about my, my biography that we're going to write. Yeah, let's let's write so a biography. You, you mentioned about lunch. It's and... going to be very entertaining. <laughs> it's going to be about doing podcasts and That's cameras a... that don't work. Right? Yeah, and, there we go. And, I think it would be intriguing. Very intriguing. It would be a lot like Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody will know who I am afterwards. Exactly. They won't anyway. know you're the Jordan Bell for <laughs> podcasting. <laughs> okay. Not that far. Okay. All right. Let's go for uh, let's go for the uh, movie game. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So it's time for the movie game. Yep. The movie game. So for those of you that haven't been with us before and why haven't you been um the movie game is a game uh, it's basically a movie chain so if one person says a movie like if i say a movie then martin will have to name an actor from that movie and then in turn i would have to name a movie that another movie that the actor has been in so it's like a chain we keep going until one of us can't answer and there's only a couple of rules is you can't name a movie or an actor twice in the same chain even though sequels and prequels are allowed uh-huh. um and then you also can challenge the other person if you think that they, they that they can't they name can't. something else another yeah. element from that movie yep yeah. and then we just play the first to two we do three best of three rounds so first to two wins right. all right so let's kick it off yeah, go ahead. Kick it off. I'll kick it off. Um, how about I start out with uh, Catch Me If You Can? Uh, catch Me If You Can. Let me think of somebody. Amy Adams. Amy Adams. Um, uh, Anchorman. Oh. No, she's not in Anchorman. No, I'm not thinking, no I'm thinking, you're thinking of a different Talladega movie. Nights is what I'm thinking of. I don't yes. know if you want to let that slide or not. But I'll let it slide. I'm thinking of Talladega Nights. I'll let it slide. Okay. <laughs> Talladega that, Nights. So Talladega yes. Nights? Okay. Yes. Uh, Michael Clark Duncan. Oh, um, Armageddon. Yes, Armageddon is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Owen Wilson. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, Wedding Crashers. Mm, okay. Isla Fisher. Um, um, now you see me too. Oh no! No, she was in. No. What? She wasn't in two. She wasn't. She was in one. Yes. Okay. Ah. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking she was in. I knew she was in one of. She them. was in the first one. And she was in the first. Ah. Right. Uh, that's ah. My bad. Man. Okay. All right. Replace her with Lizzie Kaplan. That's right. And with no explanation. Yeah. I, well, I didn't even see the second one. <laughs> oh, so. okay. I don't know why. Yeah, All right, so let me. Keep I going. was trying to be too clever. Ah, I was trying to be too clever. Too clever by half. Uh, uh. <laughs> All right, let me start. Let me start. How about um, night school? Um, I don't want to do the obvious. Uh, what's his name? Um, Rob Riggle. <laughs> okay, nice. Um, the Hangover. Um, Bradley Cooper. Okay. Um, Bradley Cooper, let's say, I don't know, let's say, 
I guess A Star is Born. Uh, considering I haven't seen that yet, uh, I, I could I, say I, Lady I Gaga, but then that would like get me into a hole yeah. because I don't know another movie that she's been in. Right. Um, so I'm going to say Dave Chappelle. All right, she Dave told Chappelle. me he was in it. Yes. <laughs> I was going to say, I gave you the answer uh, that you could use. So, all right, so Dave Chappelle... Let's see. Well, that's a little bit tough, actually. Dave Chappelle doesn't have a huge movie resume, but let me think. Uh, what's the one? I'm trying to think of the one. Oh, man. How about a challenge? He's in, um, he's in The Rock. No, he's not, but you're close. You're, he was you're... in the... He's on, oh, Air. Yes. I I oh, I thought you had me. But... I did have you, and I just blew it. <laughs> Conair. Yeah, you're right. Conair. It's Conair. Al- yeah, he's also in Half Baked. That's the one I couldn't um, think of off the top of my head. The, the the pop movie. He's also in Dave Chappelle's Block Party, which is yeah. really kind of not really. And then we have to say the Fugees, and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then where would we go? Oh, all man. right. You went on te- two technicalities. Um, Are they really technicalities? They're not technicalities. <laughs> they're two just. <laughs> Blatant f ups by me. It's late. I think. Um, I think yeah, you're, you're you're having a rough. Past week. my bedtime. Past <laughs> my bedtime. I think I got a concussion from that. Uh, from, my from car the getting total. You got yeah. a concussion <laughs> of the Falcons game. <laughs> Wouldn't be the only one to get a concussion <laughs> of the Falcons game. Exactly. Yeah, just like the rest of the Falcons getting injured. Ah. No, I'm just uh, <clears throat> dumb. Uh, <laughs> well, All right. Well, anyway. Yep, that's the movie game for that, this time. Yeah, we've had better. <laughs> yeah, we definitely have. Um, all right, so thank you for joining us uh, once again. Sorry if we missed the last month. We'll be back again next month, hopefully. Yes. November. We definitely have. Um, and uh, once again, we just want to uh, uh, thank you for listening, but we would also appreciate it if you guys shared the podcast if you enjoy it yeah um even if you don't enjoy it why don't you share it anyway um maybe inflict pain on somebody you don't like exactly um and then we'd also like to hear from you about things that you're working on um exactly we love to talk about the stuff that we're working on Mm -hmm. but uh, we'd love it even more to talk about things that other people are working on yeah uh, reach out to us let us know what you're doing Um, because i know there's a lot of stuff out there that we normally don't hear about until after we've shot the podcast already and uh um, but yeah, let us know what's what's going on. Please do, and, and then, definitely thank you for yeah listening and watching. And then thanks again to Eureka Failure for mm-hmm. providing the music for this podcast, and apparently having my artwork show up in a, in a major motion yeah, picture. Yeah, placing and placing uh, your artwork in major motion pictures. <laughs> fantastic. All right, well, <laughs> we'll see you next time, and uh, don't drink and drive.